Good morning. It's a little after midnight here in Goshen, Indiana. It's Sunday morning. And y'all saw yesterday I was down with the high mileage helper at his house. That Again, we're not going to go into the details of that, but it's a couple hours away from Goshen. So I had been dispatched on my load and came back up here to finish out my 34 since the yard is right there and I, I get a phone call hey buddy what you doing hmm? in Indiana well uh, well this was yesterday well uh, where are you headed I got a load to Arizona oh well I'm in Indiana too and got a load to Arizona. So going to be running with Chris again all the way across the country. Uh, we've been talking a little bit today and I know I don't really plan out my videos, but we put a lot of thought into one and we got something real special coming for you guys. Um, I don't want to get too deep into the details of what we're given just because I don't know how much the plan is going to change as we go on. But the goal is to give you guys a very thorough from right here, pre-pick up everything, all the way through the entire process, the paperwork, the hookup, the driving, the sleeping, the if we have any interactions with DOT, whatever, we're gonna give you guys the whole thing and answer as many questions as we can. So this will always be a go back to video because I get, I don't know how many times I get the same question every day. Um, so this will be a, a quick, go check out this video and it'll cover everything A to B, X to Z, all of it. Uh, anything I missed? Nope. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's tired. It's, it's late, we're tired. <laughs> that, tired. do that. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go to bed and tomorrow's gonna be just a bunch of prep work. And then um, I think we're not picking up till Monday, right? Monday, yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow will be prepping, getting the trucks ready, all of that kind of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get you guys this whole process. So I'm going to say good night, but for you, it'll be a couple seconds and it'll be Sunday. So I'll see you tomorrow. truck, the, you know, the age of your truck, it has to be a diesel, 
uh, some of the minimum requirements, and just your real basic information. At this point, go ahead and call a recruiter and get that process going. Uh, I've seen it take two weeks. I've seen it take a month. It's it's kind of give and take as to how quick they get them through and how bad they're hurting for drivers and all that information. Now, once you go through all that and you're accepted and you're hired on, they'll ask you to come out here. This is Wakarusa, Indiana. This is the main office right here behind me. Uh, they also have orientation in the Pendleton office, Pendleton, Oregon, but it's not as often as the one here. So it's kind of up to you which one you're going to go to and which one they have scheduling for and all of that kind of stuff. But once you go inside, you go through your orientation, they give you a real quick breakdown of how to use the Keep Trucking app and just a real basic level of information to get you on the road and rolling. At that point, once you have gone through all of that, you'll go over this way, over here, and what is uh, about a mile down the road, there's our Wakarusa yard. All right, so this is the Wakarusa office. When you get here, you will go inside there, the kiosk, and the tester will tell you where to go, which is over there. And we're going to drive around since the gate's locked, and we'll show you kind of what that looks like. All right, so this is where you're gonna hook up to this trailer. They keep it here for testing purposes. Uh, that's why we, we backed Chris's truck up, just to kind of show you uh, what it looks like. When you take off, you'll go back into this gravel here, and then you run slalom down this line of cones, left, right, left, right, all the way around. Turn around, come back, left, right, left, right. And then they have you park typically not laid over and you have to back it in to this parking box here uh, can't go over the lines obviously and, and whatnot um, honestly I don't know if they vary the test depend <coughs> excuse me depending on what truck you have or uh, you, what a level of experience you tell them you have but when I took my test those were the two things they had me do and that was pretty much it uh, it looks pretty simple and it's not hard but it's not as easy as it looks, just because you're dealing with this much trailer off the back of your truck. Again, not hard, not crazy difficult, but absolutely harder than it looks. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> that's it for the driving test. And um, after that, you head back to the Wakarusa office, which, uh, well, I'll cover what happens at the Wakarusa office when we get back over there. Okay, so this is uh, the driver's lounge. In here, there's showers, laundry, some vending machines. Uh, they have hygiene products inside the vending machines, couches, chairs, just a good place for drivers to relax. Uh, laundry facilities. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a really nice setup uh just a really nice place for drivers to come and relax better than most truck stops honestly um so we'll go through and we'll get you some uh some pictures videos inside kind of show what's in there um there are people in there so we're going to be respectful and not uh get get the get the drivers onto the videos but we'll show you as much as we can
so now you've gone through, you've passed your driver's test and you've got your transporter plates and you have all of your information and you're, you're ready to go. So this is the load board. And as a driver, this part isn't so important to you, but everything else will be important to you as a driver. So this tells you that that's a 42 foot fifth wheel, 41 foot fifth wheel, And if they're a regular travel trailer, that F will be a T. And then it tells you the city you're picking up, the city you're dropping off, if there's any special instructions, the GVWR, which is important if you're non-CDL or you're not operating an ELD, um, you can't be over the 26,000, so you have to keep in mind that. This tells you how far you're actually hauling the trailer. trailer. This is your rate per mile and this is what your pay is. So moving forward from there, you can see you'll get a um, little description. So it's a fusion style fifth wheel. It's 43 foot. It's picking up at the horizon yard. It does reimburse tolls. It reimburses a wash fee at the yard and any trip permits you have to get for specific states, it's reimbursed as well. Um, there's other information further below. I don't really want to go into that because you do kind of start getting into stuff that the that Horizon might consider um, private. So we'll we'll stop it there. Uh, but what it does show is like the actual pickup address and the actual delivery address. And we I, I just personally don't want to put that information into the video. So now that you have gone through and you've selected your load and you're completely ready to go you'll get this dispatch information. So this is obviously, as you can see, Chris right there. Uh, he is picking up in Topeka, which is right down the road from where we are. And it's going to Mesa, Arizona. This is the trip him and I are running on um, side by side. It only shows your most recent 50 loads. He's done way more than 49, I promise. <laughs> Uh, but this is all of your information here. You go into your pre-trip inspection where you submit your, your PTI paperwork and you verify the VIN and you take pictures of the unit to annotate any damage. And we'll go over that stuff in a little bit. But for now, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown on the load board itself. Okay, one other thing we did want to touch on real quick. Uh, this is the EFS app. You get this card as we mentioned when you start. What a lot of people don't know is this price locator thing. Like, yeah, you can transfer funds, which is great. You can sync your personal bank account to it, transfer from your EFS card to your personal bank account. That's great, I use it all the time. However, this price locator, when you go in, uh, we were playing around with it earlier, and that's why there's, there's two different blocks set up here. But if you zoom in, it gives you your location, which is this little red truck, and a 25 mile radius all of the truck stops that are partnered with EFS it takes the lowest price and it turns it green you get discounts with EFS um, over in Oregon for a long time there was a place that was 98 cents a gallon and I've got as much of a discount personally as a uh, dollar sixty off of the price per gallon at the pump so great way to save a ton of money uh, I, I've saved $80 in one fill-up, and it, it, you get a text message, and it tells you that we took this much out at this place, and you, because of your EFS discount, you saved this many dollars. So just a neat tool to have as well. All right, so we're on our way back to the Walker Roots uh, office, and I saw this unit here, and I wanted to take a minute to let you guys know that when you... If and when you ever haul one of these vintage cruisers, you do not, do not, do not use your weight distribution bars. They, the Horizon policy, they do not want you to put the weight distribution bars on these trailers just because the tongues are painted in a body match color and they don't want it to get any scratches on it. That's all, and uh, we'll see you back at the Wakarusa office. And then, assuming you pass the driving test, you'll come back here, you go back in the office, you'll get your transporter plates, you'll get your driver number, all of your information, and at that point, you're ready to...
take the next step we're going to show you, which is going to pick up your first load. All right, so we made it back from the Walker Russo office. We're back here at, um, well, a lot of you have labeled it the Amish Walmart. So here we are. Uh, me and Chris are both in the uh, middle of our 34, so we can't go pick our trailers up. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do that tomorrow, and we figured that while we're doing this video, putting everything together, all the details from the absolute beginning of you going to the website and saying, I want to work for you all the way through, uh, and this is going to go all the way through to delivery and submittal of paperwork. We figured we'd go through the gear you need. So we'll start out here. Absolute requirement. You must have mud flaps on your wheels, whether you have a single or dual rear wheel, you have to have the mud flap, both sides, obviously, and then a full width flap that goes all the way across. Uh, that is absolutely a requirement. And I have seen Horizon, Indiana, and I think it was Starfleet, but don't quote me if it was them or Synergy, I don't recall, turn drivers away for not having them. I was one of those drivers. Uh, I showed up, I had a set of rock tamers, went, all right, let's rock and roll. They said, absolutely not. Go down and buy new mud flaps. So I did. Now, <clears throat> once you get up to your unit, you're gonna do your, well, we'll, we'll go through all the process of what you're gonna do, but here's some stuff you will need. Torque wrench. Um, and then you need the adapter to get a little bit off of the wheel. And then you are told by Horizon to have these three sockets. It is a 7 eighths, a 3 quarter, and a 13 sixteenths. I have only used the 3 quarter and the 7 eighths, but I'm sure there are RVs out there that require the 13 sixteenths. Uh, you need to have a locking pin. This is for your bumper pole trailers. You need to have... We'll get to my, so you need to have a two inch ball and then I have my two and five sixteenths down on my weight distribution hitch, which is a requirement that you have with a minimum rating of 10,000 pounds. Now, pieces that go with this weight distribution hitch are your two bars and these are what actually do the weight distributing part of it. And then these clamp on to the tongue. Uh, earlier when I said you don't put your weight distribution hitch on the vintage classics because they don't want you to scratch the paint These are what scratch the paint. This is what tears it up So Again, if you're doing a vintage classic do not use your weight distribution hitch also absolutely mandated DOT triangles and If you have any type of a breakdown or whatever puts you on the side of the road if This is my truck and you're looking at the back of my truck like this <coughs> You would have your first triangle even with the left edge of your truck and then as you space them backwards you move in I've seen people that do it the other way and basically what you're doing at that point is you're setting your triangles up and you're guiding people to follow these triangles at night because they're reflective and it's going to guide them right into the back of your truck so you, they need to start and guide people away from your truck I don't know how people mess that up but a little public service announcement all right absolutely required to have chains um, I have not had to use these yet obviously but I do have them these are for dualies and these are for my 19.5s uh, make sure you get the right chain for the correct tire size that you have on your truck also a tire pressure gauge this pairs with the torque wrench because you torque the lug nuts you take check the tire pressure make sure that tire is not too low or over inflated before you take off down the road uh, another mandatory item is the fire extinguisher and you can't just set it in your truck somewhere it has to be actually mounted so underneath my bed I have this mounted and then a clamp device that actually bites the neck of it and holds it in place if it's not mounted down you will get in trouble for that absolutely uh, another DOT mandate first aid kit so Make sure you have, and it doesn't have to be, you know, this EMT rated or this rated or that rated, just a basic first aid kit for basic trauma. Uh, you have to have a wet cell deep cycle battery. That's per horizon mandate. Uh, oh, battery is horizon. DOT requires it to be a wet cell. Um, I don't know why they want it to be a wet cell, but DOT says it has to be a wet cell. The purpose for this is that in the event of your trailer separating from your truck, the emergency breakaway cable, which you've seen in a couple videos, and we'll show you again tomorrow when we hook up, will yank that plastic plug out. And if you don't have a battery source on the truck, the brakes will not engage. 
runaway trailer, you're shut down by DOT for not having that. And then a just a basic ratchet strap to hold the battery into the trailer safely. Now, they also strongly suggest a fifth wheel because they want the fifth wheel units moved too. But I know a few drivers who only have the bumper, bumper pull setup. Uh, but for the amount of money you're gonna spend, I mean, not, not on mine specifically, but Chris, uh, my wonderful cameraman for the week, you spent 350 on your hitch? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so $350, get a fifth with hitch and you're ready to go. I went a little overkill, whatever. Um, additionally, especially if you're, if you're an ELD driver, get yourself a big, big beefy quality hitch. My truck is rated for 21,500 off the bumper. I found a 21,000 pound hitch. Um, there has been five trailers I think I've done, five or six, where I couldn't use a weight distribution hitch and four of them were over the weight rating of my weight distribution hitch. So get yourself a, a, a big beefy girl to slap in there so that you can pull those additional loads as they arise if you're an ELD. Now, obviously, if you're not ELD, that doesn't matter because all you're going to pull is campers anyway. You can't pull anything not a, a camper without an ELD. Another good thing to have, this is a tester. Just plugs into your seven-way pin. All the lights light up, brake lights, turn signals, everything, and you can test to make sure everything is working properly. Handy little tool. Um, you never know. Motor oil, coolant, brake fluid, power steering fluid, just the basics. Have that stuff in your truck because you never know when you're going to spring a little leak and you got to get down to the, the next town or the, the next truck stop or whatever. So get yourself some fluids. Obviously a tool kit. Uh, my lid is broken, so no matter how many times I organize this, it all falls apart. I'm going to get a better toolbox and just move everything into there. But for the time being, have yourself a basic tool kit and a set of gloves. Uh, that's good for any number of things. If you're changing out your hitch, I mean, we both got our hands fairly tires, dirty. Changing just, tires. Yeah, changing out your tires. Uh, just just moving these things out, laying them out, we both got fairly dirty. Now imagine if you actually had to switch out your ball or actually hook the equipment up or whatever. So good pair of gloves or pumping uh, diesel and def. You never know. Tire pressure gauge. Not tire pressure gauge. Tire depth gauge. Excuse me been one of those days um, this is important because there is a legal minimum you must have 430 seconds in the front and 230 seconds of tread depth in the rear so this little fella right here I don't know if you'll be able to get in there but there's your 430 seconds like that's not a whole lot of tread depth but that's your that's your minimum so I think I paid eight dollars for for this worth it because now you're not going well it it looks like i have enough tread you can actually know for sure and you know you're not going to get busted when you uh run into mr dot man um some additional uh optional suggested items a second storage box oh well, a storage box uh this is where everything of mine was until saturday friday saturday i don't remember one of those two and so it's kind of a mess now, and we just tore through it to get everything laid out. So excuse the mess. It's usually a little better looking than this. But this is going to be uh, a few real basic tools and then all of my fluids, motor oil, uh, transmission oil, filters, everything. It's all going to be stored in this, and then this is all of my actual RV equipment in the second box that I just got. Obviously, one's cleaner than the other. I'm sure you can figure that out. Um, strongly suggest an auxiliary tank. Most people do a bigger than a 48, and... I don't blame you. Uh, I would do a bigger than a 48 as well, except my main tank is 48, so that puts me at 96. I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I have plenty. Um, but if you have a tank with your typical 30 or 32 gallon tank, absolutely go higher than a 48, my personal suggestion. Uh, the reason for that is, on average, I use 60 to 70 gallons a day. Uh, if I get a good headwind, uh, it'll, it'll burn a good deal more. There, there was one time, one day, I burned over a hundred gallons. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much it for laying everything out. 
and going through the basic equipment basic equipment that uh, that we need to do this job. Next step will be grabbing the units. All right, here we are at the Topeka yard. I'm gonna pick up my unit. You'll come in, you'll put in your driver number and the other number they give you, which is your pin number. And then you wait. Computers are very old and they're uh, a little bit slower. Yeah, and then you'll you can bring that over here, and you'll see your your loads on here, which this one is already done, but that's a that's a whole other story. It was a return unit, anyway. So you'll click on whatever one you want, and you'll push enter, and it'll give you all of this information, and you'll. It'll ask you if this is the correct unit. You'll put a Y for yes. It'll ask you if you want the basic or all your paperwork. In this instance, I'm going to do all of my paperwork so that we can show you some things. But normally you can just push basic and it'll give you just your BOL and uh, your checkout sheet. Okay, so once you get your paperwork, it'll give you all your information. It says to call them um, for Saturday appointment, no Sunday deliveries, blah, blah, blah. Um, it'll give you the row that your trailer is located in that yard. Um, it will, let's see, uh, right here, when, when, we, when we drop off, it'll, I will show you, but you'll, re, you'll turn in the white bill of lading and the crossroads acceptance form, which we'll show you that on the other end. But um, anyways, this will give you all the information. It'll tell you how much the, the it weighs, or not weighs, but the GBW. Um, and it'll give you all the information you need. And main thing is that row number. And that's it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do before you hook up, or anything, is you want to check this VIN number on your paperwork to make sure it's the same VIN number on here. And do the whole VIN number if you can, because there's been times where people have just read the last four and uh, it ended up being the last four on a different unit. So it does happen. Um, but as we can see, everything here lines up good. This is definitely our unit. So we'll get all of our equipment out, get hooked up to it. I like to, uh, I'll walk over the whole thing, make sure there's no major damage, um, nothing major, then I'll pull it out and then we'll take pictures and we'll show, show you all that in a minute. So once you have all your stuff out, um, I choose to use this kind of uh, mud flap so that I can take it off. Um, you just slip that over like that real simple put your hitch in make sure you pin it and then from there we'll back up we'll hook up the battery and get it up to height where we need it and then i'll show you the rest okay so i use one of these smaller batteries for tow behinds this is perfectly legal it's intended for towing trailers um it's just for the breakaway like we explained before um but i'll go ahead and install this on here and you only need the two big wires on most trailers um there is some exceptions and that would be over in oregon where they do require everything to be hooked up 
Um, And then once you're done hooking these up, like so, and I'll tighten that down a little bit. Um, and you're gonna wanna raise this up. And I always plug this in, uh, usually plug this in before I uh, run it all the way up. But you wanna make sure that's unlatched. And then I'll back up into this. We'll get that part hooked up. I'm sure you guys know how to do that. Um, and then we'll show you load bars, safety chains, and all that stuff here in just a minute. All right, so you'll lower this. You'll lower this all the way down on the ball, just till it touches. You'll close that like that. Now you'll hook up your breakaway cable, which this guy's is very important. It may not sound like very important, but you don't want to hook this to this hitch. You cannot hook it to this hitch. If this hitch was to break off, DOT wants to see this hooked to something besides this hitch. So this is very important. So I have a carabiner over here that's mounted to my bumper. This is what you got to hook this to. Um, there's been several guys that get tickets for hooking it to this hitch. You just can't do it. Um, some states do require that you cross your safety chains. Um, I've seen, I've, I, I should say I've heard of people getting tickets for not crossed. I think it was in PA, big surprise. But anyways, um, I always cross them. And what I mean by crossing them is underneath here, these are crossed. So that way when the trailer, if the trailer was to come off, it's gonna try to pull it straight, not off to one side or another. So. You want to do all that, and then you want to put in this, the, the bar, and you just, I just pull them up and click them in. Some people spin them all the way around. Um, I just pull them up and click them in like so. Um, I'll put that one over there, and you grab one of these guys, and of course the rest got to that a little bit. Anyway, you put that on here like so. Now this particular trailer, you got to lift that up and get it way underneath there. Now you'll hook these up to where they got fairly good tension, like so. Now remember that's still all the way up. That's where you want to put these bars on. Is when your hitch is all the way up like that. You don't want to put the pressure down on the truck, then install the bars. That's not the correct way to do it. That in. So, put this one on. Slide that all the way forward, and you'll put your chain on. And this one's a little bit tighter, so these come these uh, hitches come with this little bar. You can. Put that up like that then you'll then you'll let the weight off of the or onto the truck and then these bars are set right the tension's good everything's where it's supposed to be all right guys so we got the jack all jacked up and gotta put always make sure you put this lock on or at least a pin it doesn't have to be a locking lock but it has to at least be a pin that's dot stuff um, and i'm gonna pull out of here and then we'll go over and take pictures and all that stuff. Okay guys, so once you get all that hooked up, you got double check everything, always double check everything. You're gonna go over and make sure there's no major defects, even small ones, you're gonna wanna take pictures of it. You're gonna wanna take up close pictures of it. I'm trying to see if I can see something here that would, um, would be some damage um, even if it's just small scratches around the windows or anything take close-up pictures of it 
but you want to take a lot of pictures all the way around. I'm not going to show you that, but you get the point. Just take a you know, front shot, a couple, three side, side shots, rear shots, other side, all of it. Just do all that. You're also going to want to uh, make sure you put your plate on. In the state of Indiana, they give you two plates. State of Indiana, you have to run a plate on the front of your, not on the front of your truck, but towards the front. You can put it in the windshield, you can put it anywhere you want, but it has to be facing forward, and that's only in the state of Indiana. I'm pretty sure he's gone over that with you guys, but just to, just to double check, um, make sure you secure that plate on there. Um, if it has a tire cover on it, pick the tire cover off. Put it in the back of your truck so you don't lose it. Um, I always take these out because they uh, they will fall out. These are the better ones. These are the rubber ones, but they still fall out. Um, and just go over the whole thing. You always want to make sure. Check these awnings. Make sure they're just on there really good. Um, you know, because those awnings have been known to come off. I personally never had it happen, but um, you'll you'll go in here. You'll go in the, uh, in the hot water box here and you'll find the keys. They're usually located in there. And unlock the unit. You have your paperwork out of there. I always relock the unit. I always, always lock this deadbolt. This one doesn't always hold, the deadbolt usually does. Um, a lot of these, I put them backwards because they rub on these, they rub on the doors. Um, it is kind of a little bit of security to keep the door closed, but this door can't really fly open because it's facing, you know, away from the wind or towards the wind. So it can't, it'll only pop out and just do that. So these rub all over these, and I've had dealers say something about that. So. Um, as far as all that, um, I will take all my pictures of this unit. I have, you know, it shows you on your paperwork even. It'll, sh it'll give you another BOL here that actually says everything. Right, same as the other BOL we showed you that was marked off. Or did we show them that? Yeah, okay. So, um, anyways, th there's another copy of it. So, now you know for a fact this is going to where your other paperwork says. So, there's no read, no doubt in my mind. This is the right unit. So once all that's done, um, you know, I'll, I'll double, triple check all my connections, make sure all that's good. Um, take my pictures, and then later on we'll show you, we'll show you how to um, check out of the yard. Um, we'll probably just show that once because because we're gonna we're gonna go over and have him pick up his unit. So we'll we'll just show you at that point. Um, how to actually check out so um, and yeah once you're checked out then it's all you you head to uh, um, wherever your destination is and also if you're um, if you're like me I take my magnets off when I'm off duty so um, I will put my magnets on here um, you know some trucks you can use magnets some you can't but Anyways, I will put them on before we take off here. And that's it. That's as simple as it is picking up a unit. All right, so you guys just saw us hooking up Chris's bumper pole. Now we're gonna do a fifth wheel. The steps are pretty well all the same, so I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of depth of recording every step like we did with his. Realistically, the only difference is your hitch. Uh, using a fifth wheel hitch here. You still have your breakaway cable, which I've already got hooked up. You still have your seven pin, which I'm about to hook up. And other than that, instead of lowering it onto the ball, you just back it into the fifth wheel hitch. So we already put the plate on. Yeah, we already got the plate on. We already did the tires, the lug nuts. Everything's solid. Everything's good. Did our walk around. Battery. Battery's connected. No damage to the unit. All we got to do is hook it up, get our pictures, check out, and leave. So I'm going to go ahead and get that real quick while Chris keeps filming.
and just like that the fifth was connected i'll get up here in a second and i'll, I'll pop my safety pin in i'll connect the seven pin and pull forward and we'll get our picture oh and we'll lower it down off the landing jacks all right so that's going to do it for today for you guys it'll just be a couple seconds for us we'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's Tuesday evening right now, so we uh, we hooked up my trailer on Sunday night. Went and grabbed Chris's Monday morning when his reset was up, and uh, then we took off and we made it to Sullivan, Missouri last night. You guys saw that video uh, earlier. That was the the video I uploaded this morning on Tuesday the, the 8th of September um, and from Sullivan we've taken off down through St. Louis and we made it into Oklahoma and we are a little ways west of Oklahoma City right now uh, the weather's kind of picked up a little bit plan was to get you guys this footage tonight discussing the trip but it's supposed to be a pretty good storm all night so didn't really uh it didn't play into how we wanted it to work so um just giving you guys the update on the trip thus far and now if you if you concentrate real hard we can launch up into into Chris's truck right in front of me and uh, he can give you a breakdown of the rest of the trip uh, where where we're planning to stop what our goal is and and such um, just kind of give you an overview of what an entire trip looks like it's not quite across the whole country but at the time that we were dispatched these were the longest loads that were available as, as in the most miles so we wanted to do this video here with the full start to, to end process and give you guys as much information as we could. So go ahead and think real hard, concentrate on Chris right in front of me, and uh, we'll see if we can get up into his truck. Oh, hey guys. So we're currently about 100 miles from the Texas state line 
just starting to get into this uh, real bad storm that's moving across the country right now. Uh, they're saying it may, we may get some snow. Um, we did a little research. It's looking like it's mainly going to be rain. So, we're hoping to get... Oh, at least to Amarillo, probably tonight, and then probably get in the mountains somewhere in Arizona uh, tomorrow night, and then we'll stay up in the mountains so where it's a little cooler, because it's probably still wicked hot in Phoenix, and then we will deliver, drop down into Phoenix, deliver th Thursday morning. And that will be it. This will be the end of that trip. So, anyways, we'll see you on the other end. Good morning, guys. All right, so um, <clears throat> we had taken off from uh, Missouri, Sullivan, Missouri, and the original plan was to get to Amarillo, Texas that day. Well, Mother Nature had other plans, and we wound up uh, making it into Sayre, Oklahoma that day. Um, and the wind was blowing pretty good. We weren't really able to get out and, and film. I hate doing videos in the truck. But the weather held and didn't let up. We're currently in Arizona. Um, not terribly far from delivery. Uh, the the weather did, like I said, the weather did shut us down in um, Oklahoma, which is why we didn't make it to Sayre. And I'll let Chris cover um, exactly why the weather shut us down. But as we're rolling through these little two-lane highways in the mountainous areas of Arizona, uh, Got a, got a semi in between the two of us, so Chris is a few miles ahead of me. But we're going to go ahead and uh, shoot right on up to Chris. So hold on tight, and we'll get you launched up there. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so, yesterday we took off from Sayre, Oklahoma. Uh, it was still pretty windy, um, but it wasn't really too windy, I guess. 
Um, and the reason why we had to shut down so early in Sayre is because Horizon's rule is uh, 25 miles an hour or more wind, you have to shut down. And there's a good reason for that. These trailers get really squirrely, anything over that, especially if it's a hard side wind. Um, so that's what kept us from getting all the way to Amarillo. But uh, we left Sayre, Oklahoma, and went all the way across New Mexico. We got into Albrook, Arizona last night. And we are now headed to our deliveries. I'm going to Mesa, he's going to Avondale. And so we will be parting ways when we get closer to Mesa. And he will catch up with you at the dealership and show you how that stuff goes. So we'll see you there. All right, so we just made it here to Avondale, Arizona. Uh, Chris is down in Mesa. He's probably halfway dropped off right now. Um, it's about 12 miles away, so he's he should be pretty close to being done down there. Uh, typically at this dealership, they have you park right here. They come out, they do the inspection, and then uh, you're out of here. So, at this point, right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go inside, I'm going to take my BOL, I'm going to take the keys to the unit, and you get a folder in there too. You probably saw uh, when we did Chris's pickup. That folder's got the title, the DAF, and all that, and I'll show you the DAF in a little bit. Anyway, so you take all that information, all that paperwork and the keys and everything, you go inside, they'll tell you different different dealerships, are some are service, some are sales, some are parts, they'll tell you where to go. You go in, you hand them the paperwork, you come out, you start unhooking, they come out, they do their inspection, and I'll kind of walk you through all that. So let's go inside. Okay, so as you see, we're unhooked. Uh, just as a courtesy, I wrapped up the breakaway cable. I tucked the seven pin cable up in there. Make everything look nice. Get your license plate off the back. You leave the battery in. They open up all the slides. They check all the fixtures, the lights, the all the utilities, all the everything. They make sure it all works. She's inside doing right doing all of that right now words are hard okay so um as soon as she finishes that and they'll note they're gonna note a bunch of stuff down don't freak out it's not you uh they'll let you know if there's any driver damage that they found but they always uh there's always stuff in the inside that's wrong you know let's let's be honest these things are produced as fast as they can things are missed Maybe they put the, the wrong screw in so it looks weird. I, you know, little things like that. Don't freak out. That's not on you. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> now we sit and wait while she does her paperwork. And once she's done, pulls the slides back in, then you get your battery. Don't forget it. I did that once in Utah. Uh, you grab your battery and you get your copies of the paperwork. And the next step will be me going through how to put those into the app for you. So I'll catch you guys in just a few minutes. Okay, so trailer's dropped, <clears throat> paperwork's all filled out on Camping World side. On our app, I hit the button <clears throat> and it says the unit's been delivered. Now it's asking for my delivery documents. Now, I kept all my tolls. Uh, so those will get uploaded and then I'm not going to get in close because we don't need to get into all the words and the verbiage here but you can see there is some writing and below it it says no driver damage so none of it was me it's just little defects they found like I said when they were checking in and then below that is my BOL which uh, I don't have a spare one so I can't mark out all the the stuff but you saw it at the beginning where we had uh, Chris had a spare one we printed two of his and we were able to mark off a bunch of stuff. So, <clears throat> you know what the BOL looks like. The only difference between what you saw there and what it looks like now is it's been signed by the customer and it's been signed by me. And that's it. Now, I'll just go into the app, which once you get into delivery documents, it says, you know, permits, tolls, wash fees, all that kind of stuff. And you just go through and you enter the dollar amount for anything that is applicable to the load you had. So the, my permits for this, this load, like Arizona, 
Uh, I did not have to get one in New Mexico because I'm apportioned, but most of you will have to get one in New Mexico. And there's several other states. And you get all that information in your email from your dispatcher when you're dispatched. And you just upload all those permits, you upload all your tolls, anything else that was a, a, an actual expense for that load, and you're reimbursed all of that. Now, I'll submit this paperwork, I'll get paid for this unit, and then I'm going to knock out a 30-minute break, and, uh, well, Chris should be pulling up here any minute now, and as soon as he does, we're, uh, we're taking off. Uh, I'm going to go spend the evening with him since already done a good chunk of my driving and then heading towards my next load actually takes me kind of by his house so we're just going to hang out there for the night and that'll be pretty well the the end of my drive time i'll have like an extra two hours but i could two hours further and sleep at a truck stop or two hours shorter hang out with a friend and uh relax for the evening so i think you know what i'm going to do so as soon as chris gets here we're going to take off and that's going to do it for this video. So now, well, for those of you who made it all the way to the end of this, um, I'm thinking I might get to, I'm getting to the point where I might start doing giveaways. Uh, nothing real crazy to start with. You know, I'm still a small channel. I'm still growing, but something, something, you know, uh, lights or maybe some specific RV transport equipment or, uh, I don't know, a CB radio, or maybe one of those toolboxes, or, you know, just stuff like that. Um, I don't know, we'll see how that goes. Also, uh, if you thought this was informative, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, go down into uh, the description below, send me an email, hit me up on Instagram, uh, I try to answer everything I receive. Also, if you're going to make the move over to Horizon, um, I'll be honest, if you put me down as a reference, I get a little bit of a bonus. Uh, so all they do is they do that off of driver numbers. Um, mine is 6407. So if you put me down, I get a little something. It doesn't come out of your pocket. It comes out of Horizon's pocket. And everyone wins. Uh, I gave you good information. I got a little something back from Horizon for sending you there. It's good. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So, as always, those of you out on the roads, I wish you fair winds and following seas. Take care and have a great day.